Hello and welcome. This is James at the DSO Imager channel. And today I wanted to do a quick video on processing narrowband stars. Now I'm going to be talking from the perspective of using the Hubble palette, so uh, SHO. And uh, we all know that, uh, that those stars give us some kind of crazy colors. Certainly unrealistic looking colors. Lots of purples and magentas. Uh, the blues don't look right. You get some oranges in there. And um, a lot of people actually just toss the narrowband stars and go out and get RGB stars, which is certainly an option. But I wanted to show that you don't have to uh, toss your narrowband stars. And so uh, for a demo, this is a shot of the Cygnus wall I took uh, last year with uh, the Astronomics AT115 EDT. So that's a 150 millimeter refractor. And the camera in this case is a ZWO ASI 1600 mono. And uh, the filters uh, that were used here are a mix of um, Astrodon and Astronomic uh, narrowband filters. Now while the colors of narrowband stars are off, uh, I always prefer the tightness of the narrowband stars actually over RGB stars. Now today with tools like Blur Exterminator, and star exterminator or different uh, techniques for star removal and star de-emphasizing. Uh, it's not so much of an issue, but still you're starting with um, from a better spot, color notwithstanding, using the narrowband stars. Uh, so I think it's worth it trying to uh, salvage these stars. And you're going to see in this video, it's actually a very easy process. All right, so let's take a quick look at the stars right and we can see these colors right and this is why people are tossing these stars uh, side note you know I mean this is all personal preference right I mean some people like the purple stars my wife likes the purple stars alright so this image is linear right and uh, what I did is, and you can see it here, I ran dynamic background extra extraction against this image. Uh, and then the next step that I did was I removed the stars. Uh, there it is. So this is with Blur Exterminator, actually. So dynamic background extraction, uh, then Blur Exterminator. So Blur Exterminator really tightened these stars up. So after removing the stars, uh, I did I renamed the image Starless and I did some processing on it. And so this is uh, what I ended up with. This was actually really some quick processing that I just just finished last night, uh, just for the purposes of, of this video, because this time the stars are the topic and not the uh, nebula. Okay, and here are the stars. So again, lots of. Uh, purpley colors in here and because I pulled the uh, stars off while the image was still linear this is also still linear. Now I know there's a lot of scripts out there today to uh, help uh, ease the process of uh, stretching images and working on the stars but uh, honestly the the steps that I take are so easy that I just haven't felt compelled to look at any of the scripts Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is stretch. And I'm going to use this arc sine H stretch. And what this tool does is it, it does a very good job of stretching the stars without blowing out the core of the stars. So it's a good way of retaining color uh, throughout the entire star. Uh, the brighter stars are still going to have white cores with the color around the edges, but more of the medium and smaller stars are going to have a solid color across. So a blue star is going to be blue completely. It's not going to have, it's not going to be a white star with a, a blue ring. Uh, and the stretch factor is what you want to use. Now it kind of depends on the, on the, um, image and the stars, uh, how far you can go. Uh, sometimes I can only get it up to about this far. If you overdo it, 
uh, you do end up with artifacts uh, in the cores of the stars and that's usually what I use as an indicator to stop using it so I'll do a do I'll, I'll first start with arc sign H stretch and then I will finish off the stretch with regular histogram so this is just looking at the stars uh, and I'm looking for these artifacts also if you go too far in this it can it can actually enhance um, uh, like a, a halo or a color ring but you see how these stars are all solid colors these smaller ones that's what I'm after yeah here you can see a hint of the artifact that you can get uh, let me see if I can give an example of what the artifact could look like if you go too far yeah see now I'm obviously really pushing it but you see how the core now starts to look a little weird so that's why you don't want to do the entire stretch uh, from from this tool plus I do like my stars tight uh, probably tighter than some people uh, but I mean to my to to my um, view stars really I mean in in reality they're tiny pinpricks I mean even these are too big for what the stars are really are uh, the other thing is sometimes you want more of the background stars and I'll I can create a mask I'll just do like a range mask and I can demo this real quick I think honestly for this picture this is as far as I'm gonna go with the stretch but I just want to show these different techniques so let's say that you want to bring out the rear stars but you don't want these stars to get any bigger well we could just do a a um, a, a, a range mask and then you just add some blur and the blur helps smooth the transition a larger star and the smaller stars that are caught up in the range mass will have a very light uh, mask on them that basically won't do anything so it'll allow those stars to still uh, still get bright so there there's our mask and in this case I'll go to regular histogram set that all right and there so you see I can it's it's still allowing the halo to grow but the core of the star is not adjusting and it's allowing all of these other little tiny faint stars in the background to pull out and also notice by using the regular histogram here we're maintaining the the color that we got from the arc sign stretch so actually I will give it give the whole the whole image a little bit of an arc sign of a regular stretch yeah just to pull out some of those fainter stars Yeah, I think I think that's okay. You know, I'll make it a little bit bigger just for the demonstration of this video. Normally, I'd leave it tighter, but I do want to uh, show how I deal with the color. Notice I still have the mask in place, so it's keeping some of these larger stars in check. All right. How we look in here? Eh, maybe a little too far. There we go. All right. So uh, next, I'm gonna. Well, first, I'm gonna remove this mask. Next, I uh, open up curves. 
Now this this set probably doesn't need it, uh, but what I've noticed is that when I add the stars back, some of the star saturation is lost. Uh, so we really want these colors to show through in the image, and what we need to do is increase the saturation of the stars. That way, even after we lose some of it when adding the stars back, uh, there's enough left over to show through. And so I really push the saturation. Um, how do I know if I've gone too far? Uh, if you get some really funky looking halos, like let's do another demo here. Yeah, see how we're getting the weird colors inside. Sometimes the the the, the uh, ring around the stars is really bad too. All right, so let's run with this now. It's really easy here. Uh, we just use the SCNR tool. All right, now most people running Pixinsight are familiar with the SCNR tool because we're using it to <laughs> obliterate the green in our narrow band images anyway. Uh, and while I'm not an advocate of removing all the green. Uh, from a Hubble palette when it comes to the stars definitely want to get rid of them all so we do this and now the colors are already looking better but we're not done because now we're going to do a um, invert control I and we're going to apply SCNR again so that takes care of any kind of weird dark blues or magentas that survive that and uh, hitting it with that uh, before inverting it takes care of all the green in there and now look at what we have. I mean we have a nice collection of red and well orange and blue stars. The blue stars in particular look really nice. And so normally I would leave it like this. Now on some areas sometimes these uh, orange stars right they look a little bit too orange and I want to get them to be a little bit more yellow uh, so what I'll do in that case is first I'll uh, make a color mask and uh, we'll go with a yellow and then I will invert the star image and apply the mask and we'll have to invert the mask I believe yeah so basically we want everything except these orange stars uh, masked off and now uh, all we need to do is just increase blue uh, because the inverse of blue is yellow and so if we add blue here to make these orange stars look more blue see how blue that one looks now uh, this should give us a more yellow look yeah see and it's up to you how far you want to go with that. Yeah, see the color difference? Now notice it reintroduced some green. So we can take our mask again and apply it. Yeah, and then we can hit this with another round of SCNR to take. I'm not going to do all, just to kind of take some of the turquoise tinge out of the blue stars that got added. Yeah, that looks better. Move the mask. And there. So now it's less orange and more of a gold. And uh, I think these stars are ready to get added back to the image. Uh, so let's open up Pixel Math. There's a formula that I use to put the stars back in.
create new image and how do we have it there we go so it retained a lot of the color it, honestly I think maybe I could have pushed saturation up a little bit more how's that yeah Yeah, like seeing the color of that, I really like the way that came out. There's that gold star. The blue star right next to it. Now, uh, before I would call this image uh, finish, it does need a, a round of uh, noise exterminator. So we'll hit that real quick. All right, noise exterminator just finished, and we'll take another look here. And there we go. Yeah, a little bit. See that artifact there? That's from pushing the arc sign H stretch a little bit too hard. Um, I mean, as you can see, working the stars is easy, so I could always go back and just redo this, or I can just uh, use clone stamp or or a healing brush in Photoshop to take care of that. Uh, but this is the kind of artifact that I'm talking about. And that's mostly from going too far with arc sign stretch. Uh, but other than that, I think this came out pretty good. I like the star colors that I'm getting. And, you know, so there it is. I mean, that's an option. Uh, you don't have to get RGB stars. Uh, these narrowband stars are certainly salvageable. So with that, thank you for uh, tuning in. Please give the video a like. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, love to hear your comments on uh, on what you guys think of this process. Is this an easy process? Is there a better way to handle narrowband stars, or are these still not good enough? And you're sticking with the RGB stars. I hope everyone has a uh, good rest of the day and clear skies.